Now the, the coin stuff is really good and it's the kind of coin stuff I like. Now you do have to have a table or a platform or a close-up map for a lot of it. But as I said before, it's got a retention vanish in it, which if you haven't got a really nice retention vanish, you've got to have good, a good one and this is as good as any. Um, it's got this this thing called, um, what, do, what do they call it? The slide load, that was it, the slide load where you do a trans. So, so these, are, these are moves that are really worth learning uh, and quite difficult. For some of them, you will need softer coins, which I haven't got actually. I've got to soften up some coins. I don't really know how to do it, um, but I'm sure it's very, very easy. So if you do know, put a comment below. I presume you just get Sandra or something, or not Sandra, but you know, something to buff it up. Uh, but I got, because, because, and, and the Goshman purse, there's quite a lot with, with a Goshman purse. So it's different differences, I think it's called, the first trick with the purse. And some of those purse tricks look a bit weird, don't they? But this is great. I love this different differences. I think it's that. Um, because it starts off explaining the problem with most coin tricks of this ilk, which is if you've got a copper and silver coin, most of the time because of change blindness and intentional blindness, people forget what hand each one is in anyway. So you kind of go, what hand? Have, you have you ever tried it when you say, right, what hand the copper in? And for the trick, you need them to go, well, it's that one. And they kind of go, I don't know, because they, they're all confused. Well, this gets rid of that idea. And there's a lot of that in this. There's a lot of you put the coin slightly separate from this coin because then people can see visually that they're separate. And he talks about in this trick the way that most magic is confusing because of that. There's not enough differences. So here are the silver ones. Here are the, And it makes complete sense. Uh, I've played with it. I'm, it's, it's a really nice transposition. And it's got this really lovely kick, this finish at the end, which he's quite into, these tricks where sort of all the coins appear at the same time or seem to. And when you learn it, you think you're not going to get away with it. But when you actually look at it on a video, you kind of go, oh, that looks better than I thought. And actually, there's a clip of this, I think, on the on the, the trailer for the birth of, of, of Scott um, doing this. After that, the one that I'm working on is Carpal Tunnel, which is this coin through hand. I like anything that's a one coin routine. And there's a coin routine in it where the coin gets smaller and smaller. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but it's a complete uh, vanish of a coin and, and reproduction. Uh, but this coin through hand, where you basically show a coin in your hand, it comes up through the top of your hand, goes back through the bottom, and you can, it's quite a nice one to practice because you can continue doing it just over and over again, so you can get into flow uh, with that as a practice session. When I was um, a, ki a kid, I wasn't a kid, it feels like I was a kid, it was actually about 20 years ago when I started learning magic, I did that thing that a lot of us do where we learn a trick that's way beyond us. And it was something I saw in Al Schneider's book, and it was a, a twirl load, a load of a coin under a card, which I saw him do on his on the internet when the internet was in its infancy, and it just looked amazing. And I started working on it before I could even hold a coin properly. And, you know, it's one of those things. But I remember seeing some hope in there, and then I kind of forgot about it, and I think about it every now and then. And now I've gone, and this uses that same load uh, in a really lovely routine. So the first thing is you have two cards and you, you produce the coin, a uh, card and you produce four coins from a card. And then you go into this other thing which is called Big Bang, which is a kind of matrix, but um, what do they call it? Uh, not a kickback, what a, a backfire assembly, that's it. So David Williamson done a lot of these, didn't he, where you sort of do a matrix and then there's a really unexpected end. And like I just said before, the coins sort of reappear all over the table and it looks, these four coins, and it looks really, really lovely. This is what I'm going to spend my time on, I think, most out of this book. I think there's there's loads in this. It's challenging enough to get into a real good flow with. Um, it, it's justified because it looks really good. And with this production, I just think the whole thing looks very magical. There is also this uh, free coin vanish. Coins vanish one at a time and they get reproduced. It's, oh, God, what is it called? Over the Hills and Back Again. That's it. So Over the Hills and Back Again is... Uh, you. you take the coins, you slowly vanish them. It's, a, it's got a bit of a feel of hanging coins on it. It's David Roth's hanging coins, if you know that. But I, d I never really got on with that because I always felt, even in really expert hands, it looked a little bit cosy. And this does when I do it as well, but I can imagine it, it's a lot less cosy once you know how to do it. Uh, and I do love those routines, like the Troy Hooser routines, and I've seen Eric Mead do a couple where, where the coins just seem to melt. Again, there's so much to mention. I want to look at all of them. I suppose the, if I look at it and I look at what I'm definitely going to be working on after that, if I get there, there's a, I really like coins in glass and coins in cup routine because of the sound they make. And oddly enough, there's one that uses a sound, which uses this Chinese, um, I think it's Chinese, uh, symbol. And you touch the coin to the symbol and it, it, it kind of gives it some meaning, uh, which you actually draw onto the cup. But there's also uh, coins appearing in cup routine that's silent. And I really like the idea of that. I really like the idea of a magical sort of 
you know, you tip the coin out of the room for metal, uh, out of the room, out of the cup, you tip the coin out of the room, uh, out of the cup, and it hasn't made any sound when it's arrived. And that's a really interesting concept for me as well. There's something very magical about silence. I've talked about it before. If you can really create a moment of, you know, how did it get in there without making a sound, other than how did it get in there, of course, which is the, the point of the thing. So, listen, I'm going to stop going through the tricks there because I've, I've, got, like I said, I've got this board over there and I've seen another one that I want to mention, but I don't want to mention them all. But uh, well, I will actually one more. There's a really nice sort of um, Miser's Dream that you do with kids that's quite challenging. Um, and talking about challenging, there's this spellbound routine at the end. If you like a spellbound like me, I absolutely love it. Again, it flows, it's difficult, um, it's not for a beginner, but you're gonna like it if you know your stuff. And that's the thing, I think this book is fine for, it's, no, it's not a beginner's book, but if you think of the coin stuff, it starts off with a retention vanish. It's then got a couple of moves with a coin, uh, like the slide load, then it goes in, then it kind of jumps up fairly quickly, really. Um, I think it's a good companion for those people that want a sort of, if you've got that in the Roth book or something like that, to start off with coins or Bobo, obviously. Um, then it just shows you some, something that, uh, that feels like it's really been thought about. And, th and these routines all feel like that in this book. They, they, they feel like they've been worked in over years. And that's going back to this slight club idea that, that they've been discussed and talked about. Maybe this would work and that would work. And, and as, as all the books I've reviewed, because I have got to the end of it, it's not full of filler. If I get halfway through a book and I think, look, there's half this stuff wrong with you, I I'll tend not to bother and either review it there, which I haven't had to do yet. Um, or just leave it. But this does, this feels like a complete book, a bit like I said about Tesseract and Game Changer. It's it's not like the last trick, they're running out of ideas. It's got a good flow to it. It keeps you reading. You want to keep going with it. I didn't get bored with it. You know, it's a challenge for me to read these books in the time I have. And I kind of would look forward to sitting with it, which is which is a really important um, thing about a book, isn't it? Because it's a lot of, it, it's a lot of time you put into it. The, the, the font of this, which I mentioned before, is important. I, and I hadn't thought about this, and I'm sure this is deliberate, it's got big writing in this, and I thought it, that was just a fill page, it isn't, because it's a massive book. You can put the book quite a long way away from you while you're having a coffee and read it, which I have found to be really, really useful. I went to dinner the other day, and when we, when we go out on Sundays, we all go out to this cafe, me, kids, and Joe, and we have some real drink, and then we, the deal is we do an hour of reading or just chilling. And I had, I had a plate of food, and I had that there. And uh, it was really nice and to, to be able to have me, me, and I'm not saying you should be eating with your family while practicing, makes me sound like a terrible father, doesn't it? It's kind of the deal when we do this thing. But it's, uh, but to be able to kind of have that space in front of you, for your close up, man, I'm, what am I talking about? I'm talking, I'm talking about food. No, that's not the best. No. One, look, you can put a close-up mat and cut. That's what I was getting. I knew there was something I wasn't saying that I wanted to say. And I, was, I remember thinking, eating the food, going, this is great. But the reason I'm saying it is you can put a close-up mat and your cards on the table and have there. Not so you can stuff your face. <laughs> oh, God, I'm such a twat. So I said before it was flawed, and it has got a couple of flaws in. Uh, first of which, it has tricks that aren't necessarily closers, and it, it's very honest about that, and that's why flaws are good, right? Flaws are, you know, like I said, some of my favorite films are flawed, like the Willy Wonka film, because it means people have put more thought and energy into it, and it isn't just, oh, what, 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 what can sell? It's, it's People have played, and you can see that, you can see that play and that creativity, which, which again reminds me of the movie. Um, it's also, there were a couple of moments in, uh, in the book where I got quite frustrated. I needed some more detail. The photos are beautiful, uh, the descriptions are good, but there's a couple of moves. There's a Larry Jennings move, which is, I think it's called this circle shift or something like that, which, which I really struggled with understanding. I could have done with a little bit more detail. There's a couple of moments where it was saying sort of words like rotate, but it wasn't, or, or squeeze the deck here, but it wasn't really telling you enough of where to do that. Now, you can work it out, and I'm sure you can look online and find out. And there are only a few moments like that, but with the photos as well, there's a couple of bits where I could have done with a few more or a little bit, you know, the photos that go really into detail. Um, that I, I, there were maybe four moments where I kind of went, oh, I can't really see that. And then I played, then I got it in the end, but I could have done with some video backup. Uh, but that's not, you know, that's not what you get with books, is it? Well, some of them, and it's, it's not a requirement but you may find that yourself as well. But overall, 
this is a brilliant magic book and it must be hard to write a magic book now that feels different and I suppose that's why they've put so much effort into it because there are so many now and there are so many good ones and people aren't, not many people are releasing bad ones at the moment. Uh, so if you want something creative, if you want something that you're going to enjoy reading and go back to again and again, it's going to last you a few years and you're going to spend a, a long time learning some of these tricks but none of them are difficult for the sake of being difficult. There's a reason to learn them and it isn't just the difficulty. Um, they look brilliant and I'm really looking forward to playing with them. Um, so that's Pure Imagination by Andy Gladwin and John Campbell. I really suggest you check it out. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for staying with me on this. I reckon this will be a two-parter again. Uh, please check out cardmagiccourse.com, like, subscribe and share it. It makes the world of difference. If you mention this on the cafe, if you make people aware of the site, it'll be great because it takes me so long and sometimes I run out of time, but I'm trying. So have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.